play for the people that lived, breathed, and died for that badge on the shirt. That's right! From the tough sheets to the Eco Power, strong stadium names here in England. What's up, everyone? It's your soccer zombie, Tom Franklin here. Got some stragglers behind me here. Uh, we got Danny Dixon over here, and then we got uh, the C H A L L. That's the one. <laughs> Chala, Aaron Challoner here, our uh, fellow Doncaster slash St. Louis City SC fan, and. Uh, <laughs> There's a little story behind the scarf that uh, you're wearing there, Aaron. Let's go ahead and uh, look at uh, your anointing earlier. And there you go. You have been anointed with our St. Luligan scarf. <laughs> Brilliant. You are now a Luligan. And also, courtesy of No Goal Patrol, you have one of our Berkey towels. Oh, fantastic. Uh, in honor of the uh, he's in your head chance. Uh, that... we'll, we'll respect to the former Dortmund keeper. All right, so we're coming into this one here. It is uh, Wrexham in town, Wrexham promotion contenders in League Two, of course. If you're an American watching this, uh, you all know about the Wrexham story, you know about Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney and the TV series on FX. And uh, yeah, I'm here to see them, but I'm probably the only American in Doncaster that is not a Wrexham fan. I am here to support uh, the Donnie Rovers. And I, to tell you the truth, why would an American support the Donnie Rovers? Blame the C-H-A-L-L -L back there. <laughs> because he decided to back St. Louis City SC in the MLS, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to return the favor. I am going to back the Rovers because he was nice enough to support us. It's only fair, right? Going into this one, Rovers playing a lot better football of late. A uh, bit on, a, on an unbeaten streak lately. Yeah, one defeat in the last 11 games. It's been formidable form at the moment. A lot of key players going into that form, and... You know, it's going to be our biggest test since we started this run of form. And, of course, you know, I booked this trip four months ago back when the Rovers were flirting with relegation. And, uh, you know, I was coming here fully expecting just an absolute bloodbath, you know, by, by Wrexham. And now we're coming into this one, Danny, thinking that, hey, we could get, I mean, one point is quite possible. Three points, that doesn't sound crazy, doesn't it? No, no, if you... Tell me this, this game uh, 11 games ago, Wrexham, I would be quite fearful uh, of Wrexham. But now, uh, like I said, in my 11 games, we've won seven, we've drawn three, and we've only lost one. Uh, we've come into this, uh, into this game with a lot of confidence. And of course, if you came over, you know, from watching the Reading and uh, Bolton video that I did yesterday, first of all, thank you very much for your feedback on that. All the Reading uh, fans and even the Bolton supporters I met there as well have been absolute class. You all have turned out very well for my video, and I really appreciate you guys. But one of the stories last game uh, between those two teams was two teams that had ownership issues. Uh, Bolton's getting out of their issues. Um, Reading very much in the thick of theirs right now, although there is light at the end of the tunnel. Of course, Wrexham, no ownership issues whatsoever now because of Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney. And uh, uh, but what's the situation with, with with the Rovers? Like, how would you, how do you guys rate your uh, rate your ownership group? Um, for me, uh, well, we had a bit of uh, issue with our uh, chairman uh, David Blunt, who has now gone, uh, <laughs> thankfully, because uh, now uh, hopefully now the shackles have been put off, and the owner Terry Bramall taken full control of the club again. Um, to say that, uh, we had a transfer embargo in January uh, where we couldn't sign any players for a fee. So the four loan signings we made in January were well, made us 110% uh, 100, better. Uh, Lola Tyler, Matthew Craig, uh, Akeem Adelican, and, uh, well, not so much Billy Waters, who's on loan from our opponents today, for Exxon, by the way, so he couldn't play anyway today. But, <clears throat> yeah, you know, we had to beg and borrow uh, for them players. But the future's looking bright for us, uh, Rovers under Bramall, because I feel as though um, 
financially, I think we can compete next season, me personally. You guys love your gaffer here, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. I think the, the fan base de deserve tremendous tr credit this season because I think where some fan bases under the bad form would have been very reactionary and said, get him gone, we knew what he was capable of, didn't we, Danny? We knew that he oh. was a capable manager and we knew that we had to stick low to this manager and the fans deserve massive, massive credit for not, not asking too many questions of the manager, even when it got really, really tough. We stuck low to our manager. We knew what he was capable of. We knew what was what was capable of going forward. We knew what we needed to do on the pitch and the training ground. And what we did there was we did what we needed to do. And I think that's why us Rovers fans were really patient with McCann and why we didn't panic when we were low in right in the table. Um, you know, is that because we knew what he's capable of and that we have to be patient. Well, Danny, me and you I have some business to conduct here, so uh, uh, let's get to it. Danny, you are getting our first season away kit for St. Louis City SC. We didn't have a lot of options uh, for kits to get you, so, but that one has been, that's a, that is a retired kit, so it's going to be, it's gonna be rare. And uh, what'd you get me here? I got you a rare Dr. Sirova Dwayne shirt for this season. Okay, St. Louis, two games in England, two physical tickets at each game, because that's how England does it, folks. Come on, St. Louis, get your act together. I want physical tickets, please. First of all, James Coppinger over here. Tell me about him. Uh, James Coppinger is the pinnacle of this football club. He joined from Exeter City. He joined as a young player, and he became known throughout League Two, League One, and the Championship. He's been at this club for over, what, two decades now, he's, nearly? He's the record, uh, I think he holds the record appearance holder for us. Yeah, uh, okay. Most appearances for Doncaster Rovers. He's an absolute legend. He's held many roles of the club since uh, his retirement. Yeah. He's now currently the head of recruitment at the club. Uh, yeah. One of okay. few trophies as well. One yeah. of few trophies. Someone that used to be very clearly visible is no longer uh, uh, Francis Tierney. Uh, no, what's his story? It, you're saying it wrong. What am, uh, why am I saying it wrong? It's Sir Francis Tierney. Sir Francis Tierney. Yes. Tierney. yes. Do you know why it's Sir Francis Tierney? How come? Because without him, we would have got promoted into the National League. And an interesting fact uh, for you here, Tom, about Sir Francis Tierney yeah. is that he scored. The last ever golden goal rule. Really? In football. Really? Yes. Yep. And so, he goes promoted against Dagenham and Redbridge. To really? get back into the football well, league after five years in the conference, that golden goal at the Britannia Stadium, as Danny said against Dagenham and Redbridge, was the reason we got back into the football league after five years in the conference wilderness. Yeah, right? yeah, it's for all that, yeah. Good. He said you had a shit game though against Warsaw though. Did he? Yeah, he said, he said that. Oh, yeah, well, you're shit against Warsaw. He's a good lad, he's a good lad. He's a consistent. You don't quite get the pl level of player access that you do here in the league in League Two than anywhere else. Trust me, League One, League Two, some championship clubs like the ones lower down, like your ones that have been in League One, League Two, etc., in my opinion. Um, definitely at least half the clubs in this country. A lot of big player interaction. It's very community based as we've already spoke about. Um, the players will come right by, you get to shake their hand, you get to, you know, high five them, bump them, whatever. Um, you know, there's, yeah. in fact, the funny thing is when I've done the content in the past, etc., I know a few of the players in the past have really like, uh, they've known me from the videos, like John Taylor, for example. Shout out John Taylor if he ends up watching this because he's been a massive fan of the, con of the content that I produce on YouTube. So shout out John Taylor. The people that wore that badge for years, the ethos and the DNA of this football club and whatever, what the hot DNA and the ethos should be at every single football club for the current players is play for the shirt every single week because remember the guys that wore that badge before you, remember the guys that will wear that badge after you, you set an example, you set the bar, and that's what we want from our teams week in, week out, every single season. Play for the badge on the shirt, play for the people that lived, breathed, and died for that badge on the shirt. And if you do that, we can't ask any more of you. Starting off, just just tonight's game for us. What is this game? Where are we? Are we playing? 
Um, so, dogs to Rovers here at the Eco Park Stadium. We've been the form team at the moment. We've won loss in 11 games. We've been the form team. We're at the top of the form table in League Two. Sorry, I'm really sorry. Stop Your big Disney debut uh, delayed a little bit, huh? <laughs> We, if, we t if we're speaking in Disneyland terms, we've had a few minute technical malfunction, but we'll be back in operation as soon as possible. Any Disney fans? Shout out to you, that analogy was for you. Every game. There's no, there's no game you don't get 12 and a half hours on it. Still making profit every season. Well, here come the Wrexham team off the bus. Bill, Bill, Phil Parkinson. Eli, turn around, mate. Perfect, mate. Even away fans like you, Phil. Phil. <laughs> 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 Phil, have you got any advice about? I'm doing my coach advice for the morning. Got any advice? Keep it simple. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Get some oh. action. Oh. <laughs> Get some action. Max. Paul. Paul. Yeah. Paul Mullen. Thank you, mate. Paul. Is he always? I don't know, Mullen lad. Ollie! <laughs> Ollie! Ollie! Ollie Palmer. I know people get frustrated about Paul Mullen, but he's a one. And of course, uh, this is being shot for Welcome to Wrexham as well, so that explains the, the boom mic in the camera. Thank you, mate. Perfect, thanks, mate. And we're here ready for this game against Wrexham tonight. It's going to be a very, very tough game because Wrexham are in the middle form at the moment. Bang Strong's have got one defeat in 11 matches, so... How do you feel about it, mate? Me? If you asked me uh, 11 games ago about facing Wrexham, I would have been uh, quite fearful. Uh, I would have been uh, fearing the worst. But right now, like uh, what Aaron's just said, we're like... We've lost one in 11, we've won seven, drawn three and lost one. And it really did feel like a family atmosphere outside of the stadium, including this guy here, Lee. He hosts a uh, vlog called Around the Grounds. I'll link it into the uh, YouTube below, but I'll be appearing on his vlog for this game, getting the American perspective on things. And I also want to shout out Joseph Aluwu, who was one of many players that I had a chance to shake hands with and uh, say uh, good luck to. This was actually after the game, after Aluwu, I felt put on a really good performance today. He is a center back for Doncaster, had a tough task today, and uh, as you'll see, was up to the task uh, today. So shout out Joseph Aluwu. You've got a new fan all the way in America now. And then finally, this gnome, well, I'll let y'all explain this one. So this right here is the Donny Gnome, the Gnome on tour. Uh, this is a very much a tradition for Doncaster Rovers supporters. Uh, we bring it to home and away games. Well, Paul Mayfield, the lovely Paul Mayfield, as you see on screen, uh, brings it to home and away games. Uh, people get a picture with it. They get the police to take a picture with it. Rival fans, players, managers. Everyone can take a picture with the norm. I know some, a couple of grounds can be a bit tetchy with it, but uh, majority of grounds, if not all of them, you know, allow the norm into the ground. And it's amazing. It's, it's like a breakthrough tradition. It's like part of the Dunk Strover supporters' culture. Like the old uh, Cheers song goes, sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. <laughs> and they're always glad you came. Amazing community atmosphere here, Chal. Yeah, you know, the best thing about a club like Dunder Rovers is the community aspect. You know, everyone knows everyone. You can interact with the players, shake the round, have photos, get things signed. I'm going to bring one of my shirts on last home game of the season against Barrow, so yep. it's just, it's amazing. The squad feels so together and it's been like that for a, for a little while now. And if you're nice enough, you get your own kit. This is one reason I'm over here in England because I wish American sports had this kind of sense of community. Like, I think we're onto something in St. Louis. I think we're getting there, yeah. but it's still the developing and we don't see that with baseball we don't see that with the nfl we don't see that with any other sport this is what i love about this there's a lot that american sports in my personal opinion can learn from british sports and if st louis can take some of those traditions and bring them into their club they'll be making a lot of progress in terms of their role in revolutionizing the mls going forward just one luligan at a time right yeah just one luligan at a time mm -hmm. All right, uh, just got out of the club shop, and uh, just like yesterday in Bolton, got to get myself a scarf. This is a Donnie Rovers scarf that'll hang on my wall with love. And then also because it is England and it's a little chilly, got myself some uh, gloves as well. Uh, by the way, if you want to see how affordable merchandise here is in England, my buddy Chal over here will have a uh, club shop review on his channel shortly.
100%. We've got some wonderful stuff that we talked about in the club shop and uh, some good ratings. Not going to spoil the ratings, but some decent ratings. So, this is the Dogs Drover season card or season pass. Uh, so, when you've got one of these, all you need to do, same with a ticket, is you just scan it. And in you go. What a crowd. So you can see here, so the stands are very much similar to each other in terms of facilities. So you've got hot food, drinks, you've got a variety of stuff around there. Obviously shout out to our catering partners, DM4. Okay. Wonderful catering partners and some decent prices as well. $2.70 for a Pepsi. It's $8.99 at St. Louis's uh, City Park. Uh, Carling Pint, $4.50. That's $12 in America. Welcome to Wrexham. Welcome to Doncaster. by Doncaster having the ball mostly in Wrexham's side of the field. It's been the other way around for the last minute or so. Wrexham starting to press up and assert themselves a little bit here. They need to stop their rhythm, stop their ball control, their tempo. And we're doing that so far. Wrexham going forward though with a couple of day chances. So we're just going to be on our air game defensively. We should be all right. All right, 13th minute, still early days. Come on, Rovers! <laughs> Now, part of this could be just simply because we're sitting on their side of the field, but the Wrexham fans have been extremely loud all game. The story for Doncaster so far, they're getting the balls in deep. They're just, when they get into the box, though, it's being well defended and you can't really get a good shot off. But overall, it's been a good game so far. Hopefully, we get the goal yeah. that shows for it. These teams are very evenly matched here so far. You could tell one's pressing over the other and one team's pressing back against the other, so it's going to be a very entertaining match, even if there might not be a lot of goals. Nope. Suddenly, are the Wrexham faithful here? Yeah. Rebound shot. Oh, Okonkwo deals with it. Almost 2 0. I don't think my arm can take it, let alone the people who've been here 50 odd years. Confusion in the box by Wrexham. The ball almost squirts in. Okonkwo having to clear it off the line. Uh, Donnie fans thought that was in. We thought that was in or almost at least. But keep it going like this. If we get the second goal, I can feel it. 53rd minute, still a lot of game to be played. Come on, Reds. season so well done Rovers you've done your team round you meant that much to you very nice turnout here this is a stadium that doesn't hold that much up, sign him up sign him up sign him up oh, oh what, what a best. save great save by a cold one yellow card for Paul Mullen and the Doncaster fans <laughs> loving it Rexton fans not so much Respect your refs! Respect your refs! 
by the way, when you get down to uh, these levels of English football, sometimes you run into pitches that are a little substandard. This is not one of those pitches. It's a very quality pitch here at uh, at the Eco Power. A little rough around the sidelines, but on the pitch, on the field, though, is where it matters. Beautiful looking pitch. Well done. 84th minute, Shaw. I need a wellness check from you. How's your heart? Uh, just passing the right. Um, I'm, I'm nearly on the verge, though. Five minutes of extra time, Shaw. Still hanging in there. Want to get that second goal now? Shut up, shut up. At least five minutes. You can do it, Red. I believe in you. Five minutes to slam the door. Standing ovation for the captain, Richard. Walking off the field on his own power. Declining the stretcher. never really was in the running in the second half. Donnie held strong, had a couple knocks in the game to their defense uh, later on with Alulu kind of getting hampered and then Wood coming out later. But uh, Doncaster faithful, this has got to be one of the biggest nights of their season so far. Over 10,000 people in this stadium witnessing an improbable upset, at least very improbable as of four months ago when Doncaster was flirting with relegation. Now there is hope that Doncaster might even possibly sneak in to the promotion playoffs. I mean, it's a long ways away. They're about seven points back right now with about, what, six or seven left to play. It's a tall task. It's not impossible, but they slay the Giants tonight here in Doncaster in Wrexham, sending Wrexham home sad. One to nil and a great night here in Doncaster, England. Enjoyed my time here at the Eagle Power. Very nice stadium. It's uh, I would rate it probably you know, in terms of size, um, you know, around a higher tier USL Championship size stadium. Built in 2007, so it's uh, pretty modern, uh, comfortable, quality people that you uh, got to meet before the game. Um, I met before the game, just a warm atmosphere here. It really is family here in Doncaster. And this is what exactly I hope American football, AKA soccer becomes down the road. But uh, let me know what you thought of the video. If you're a Donnie fan, uh, leave a comment below. You gotta be happy uh, with how things turned out. If you're a Rexham fan, let me know what you thought as well. Be sure to like and subscribe for more. My next game on my insane English speed run is gonna be in Manchester tomorrow night, Man City against Aston Villa. I don't know when this video will be up. It will probably be up after the Man City game, probably on the 4th is my guess. Um, but regardless, I'll try to get out to you here as quickly as I can. But in the meantime, from South Yorkshire, this is your soccer zombie, Tom Franklin. Welcome to Doncaster.